Hello, dear friends. Here we are with another study of the Spiritist magazine. It's always an honor and a pleasure to be with you. And today we're going to be talking about an article by the spirit Euripides Barsanovo through the mediumship of Corina Novellina. This is a book that is yet to be translated in English, but there are several chapters of this book published throughout the issues of the Spiritist magazine. And it's my blessing, <clears throat> my blessed opportunity to be with you. It's an honor to be with you. And I always remind everybody, please write your comments, write your questions. Make sure that you are sharing and liking and subscribing so that other folks can also participate in our studies. Charity, as we're going to see, is a must in today's time where we can give a little bit of ourselves to others each and every day. Before we move on, I'm going to show you what you're seeing on the screen right now is a screenshot of the issue that we're going to be talking about today. If you have the app, go to issue 48. That's the spiritism. We want to make sure spirit. We want to make sure when we are doing this, folks who come later can join us as well. Go to issue 48. There will be have an article and the issue will have this. <clears throat> this will be the cover you're gonna see. Just a little harder to see in the um the way I'm explaining it to you, but this is the app of the Spiritist Magazine. So if you visit spiritismagazine.org, you can download the app, download the PDF. That's what you see on my on the screen right now. Is this, um, I'm sharing the PDF version of the Spiritist Magazine free of charge to you both ways. And you can also order the physical copy of the Spiritist Magazine so you can have it. And you can use those resources during your studies, during your reflections, nourishing your soul for eternity. And this is the way, if you had downloaded this PDF, this is what it would look like to you. It's a beautiful cover talking about how we are all immigrants. We're all spirits incarnated on the earth in different places in different times so that we can learn. And as you can, Usually you're going to find an article from the issue from the book Spiritist Conduct, a chapter from Spiritist Conduct, and in this case is regarding the homeland, the place you were born. It's a beautiful way for us to look at different messages and different materials that will, depending on where we are in our phases of life, Will benefit us all. In the air is an other article we've studied before. If you go back to the playlist, you have um, the healing prayers, which is a message also from another book that is not in English, psychophonic instructions. You have chapters from the book Good News, still yet to be published in English. And this is the article we're gonna be talking about today: the blessedness of spiritism. So let's zoom in so we can see better so we can talk about how to so the first thing Euripides Barsanovo will tell us is peace be in your hearts the good spirits are so generous to us where they the first thing they wish for us is goodness that's how we need to start our conversations with others, wishing them well, wishing them peace. He says, the consecration of saving principles of love must be solidified in the active practice of the good. Time for reflection. How is our active practice of the good in this life? How are we today practicing the good? And practicing the good starts with our minds, starts with thinking the good, visualizing the good, 
molding the good and feeling the good with all the resources we have at hand. Who said that? Leave that one in the comments if you said who. Who is the outer spirit out of the quote I just did? Bonus if you know which chapter and which book it comes from. But joking aside, consecrating the principles of love. Remember, love is a, a law. It's one of the laws of the spirit's book, third part. The law of love, justice, and charity. So consecrating those principles of love needs to start with active practice of good. It can be giving things to people who are in need, food, shelter, clothing. It can be saying a prayer to someone. It can be by reading a message out loud in the language of the country you're living in so the spirits that are around you can benefit from the message as well. But it starts with doing the good. And the tangential good we can give to others we can clear, here's almost summer in the United States, when this first broadcast, of course, it's see other seasons in other parts of the globe. Let's think about what we can do. We can embrace some principles of minimalism or essentialism, clear out our closets of things we haven't used, clear out our pantries of things we bought and we can't consume before they spoil and donate to the folks in need. It may be cutting the grass or tending to a garden, um, the community garden, or can be helping an elderly neighbor. Can, the practice of good is infinite. From staying silent when we don't need to put more fire, candle in the fire, or it can be praying for others who have hurt us or praying that others forgive us when we hurt them, right? So he will say, in the dust of the millennia lie the shadows of ignorance of the eternal lessons of light, life and light. Time has passed, all times when individuals were fighting in the name of the Lord. Isn't that true? At some point, maybe we were the ones fighting in the name of the Lord, mistaking the ideas of the blessedness of the kingdom, the kingdom of the heart of the God in our lives through the love and kindness of Jesus and we are out there fighting wars, believing that what we know, what we do is better than other folks. So we shouldn't be doing that when we are spiritists because if you're spiritists, we know we know the spiritism is not the all and be all. There are the folks out there who are doing much good even though they, they don't call themselves spiritism, don't even know what spiritism is. Yet the spirits are with them, around them, inspiring them as much as they are with us. So we need to be kind. It says, the old hatred belongs to the past, which led individuals, individuals to the bruising of the mind and the heart, putting themselves as brute beasts before their own brothers and sisters. This is us in the past, right? We have to be mindful that in the dust of millennia, because we have existed many, many lives, the immortality of the soul and the law of reincarnation, perhaps in the past we have ignored the lessons of life and light that the good spirits has brought us, and we've incurred in debts that includes fighting in the name of the Lord. He says, Behold, the shadows gradually with a way with the glow of the eternal truths. Souls who were still trapped in error, enveloped in darkness, today are able to achieve the divine miracle of deliverance from the terrible chains of evil. So if we in the past were withering away our shadows, today we can free ourselves from the chains of evil. It takes a choice. It takes a courageous choice to break away from the old us into the new you. The old man or woman inside of us who is still chained to evil, 
to our shadows, to our mistakes, can today make a decision to move forward, to break away from the crowd, to be courageous, to be able to say, yes, I want to be with you, but no, I don't want to be with you if you're doing those activities that are not of elevated. Yes, I want to be with my family, friends, and loved ones, but do I need to spend both days, 48 hours on the weekend, just doing that, enjoying myself? Or could I weave in some volunteer activities that bring the whole family together and still brings joy while helping someone that you need? That takes courage to break away from the cultural today, the cultural means of busyness, of doing, doing, doing when you're a human being, you're not a human doing. Breaking away with having a checklist for myself and my family, check, 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 so we can have the perfect CV while we should be working for the good eulogy, what people are gonna actually remind, remember us when we are gone, by the things we did, how we made them feel, the activities we supported. Could I give away one or two hours of my time during the 48 hours on the weekend to serve someone instead of being just focused on my, my, my mind, my family, my house, my pets, my activities? It's a good food for thought because it takes, we were at some point trapped in air, enveloped in darkness, but today we are able to achieve the divine miracle, delivering ourselves from the chains of evil. Let's think about how we want to do that. On the face of the planet, there is an unanimous movement around the ideal of elevation to the Christ. More than ever, individuals feel moved to the divine charity, bringing inside the sublime desire to overcome their own personality through the desire to improve continuously and always. Do you feel moved to divine charity? Divine charity that includes the charity of the material world of giving you of your time to others and the charity on in the spiritual because the spiritual world and the material world are both divine. They're made of the same elements, modifications of the universal cosmic fluid, and they're all both made by God. So divine charity encompasses both realms, both realms of life when we can bring this desire to overcome our own flaws, our own shadows of our personalities and improve today and always. And you can improve we can improve. We have to make a choice that we want to improve, but you can. Things can get better for all of us. He says, this is the sacred fruit of a century of gifts brought to the world of shadows through the lights of spiritism. Blessed spiritism brings that brings the restoration of Christianity in the revival of the simple lessons of the carpenter of Galilee. Blessed light that the master brings to all souls for the edification of all. What does this blessed spiritism brings to your life? What it is that knowing that you're more than the physical, that you've lived many lives, that you've reincarnated many times, many more times you may reincarnate if needed be, because God is so good. That there are many different worlds out there that are populated, that the spirit world is alive and well and next to us. What is the light of knowing that Christ is our guide and model through the, the lights of spiritism that's brought to your life? How have you ch changed over time? Look at you, pre-spiritism and post-spiritism. How can we think of a way we have better ourselves, continuously lived in a way that we're continuously improving always? 
Think about many times you've spent so many hours doing things that weren't important, and then you found spiritism. And it's slowly and continuously you see the joy that it is to improve yourself through the service to others. More than just doing things for myself, when I learn something, when I hang my diplomas, when I am reading a book, what am I doing? What are we doing? When I say, what, I, what am I doing? I'm not just saying myself. I'm saying, ask yourself, what are you doing with the knowledge you've acquired, with the abilities you have, with the opportunities you're given by God? What, what are you doing with your talents that are allowing you to be in this world and better the world? We are in a moment of transition. So the restoration of Christianity that spiritism can bring us is most important. We have to go back to the simplicity of the carpenter of Galilee. The light that Jesus has brought to this world. You can find part of his deeds in the New Testament. That's good. There's not, there wasn't enough space or paper to record all that Jesus has done while he was incarnated on the earth. But you can go to the book Jesus in the Home, and the book Good News, and other books of Spiritism where you can get a glimpse of this blessed light, the restoration of simplicity of Christianity. When we read the books of Emmanuel and we see the simplicity of the first centuries of the beginnings of Christianity and the movement of Christianity, where the disciples were meeting in simple ways, where the men of the way, the apostles led by Simon Peter, were caring for the sick, feeding the folks who didn't have, caring for the widow and the children and the orphans, while the priests on the temple were swimming in luxury. We cannot be anymore the spiritual center that is flashy and big, we need to go back to, there's nothing wrong with that, as long as we are also embracing the example of the master because he's our guide. What does a guide do? A guide has to lead us somewhere, and a motto is how we need to be acting. Jesus was always serving, always meditating with God. He was praying. He stopped. He listened to people. He performed acts of charity. So that's what we need to do. We need to go back to the simplicity and reading ourselves of our shadow so we can improve. He says, actually, the divine shepherd moved his flock of luminous sheep to collaborate in lifting up spirits falling in the mud of their own inequities. When we have a spirit as center, a spirit as group, Oh, when you are doing your own gospel at home, at your own house, what you're doing is lifting up the spirits that are falling, falling around us. Because you know the spirit world is existent. If the material world today was to disappear, the spirit world would still go, go around without a problem. So there are spirits suffering all around us. And their suffering sometimes can be felt by us and by mediums. We're immersed in this um, atmosphere of suffering. And when we are doing these studies, when you're listening to this out loud, when you're going to the playlists on our channels, on the social medias and playing it while you're doing your chores, or if it says some time aside to do the gospel at home, you're bringing this light, you are the luminous sheep, one of the sheep in the flock that you're collaborating because then they can find a place to have respite. The good spirits can use our deeds so that we can they can help the errant spirits all around us, right, the suffering ones. So there's so much blessedness of spiritism and we want to celebrate being a spiritist we want to be courageous we want to tell people we're a spiritist we want to make sure that also when we say that we come with the act actions to be to have a coherent message 
It says, blessed spiritism that brings Christ back to humanity. Praise thee, the doctrine of salvation and comfort. Brethren, let us kneel before, before the altar of our conscience, begging for help and energy to understand the new responsibilities and above all, for the accomplishment of redemptive tasks. May Jesus be with you. So let's kneel in front of this altar. What is my conscience telling me today? How are my actions, my deeds, my thoughts, and my feelings in a way aligned so that if I'm not aligned with divine laws, if I'm incurring error, it's still attached to the shadows of the past, to the errors of the past. Today we can do the accompl this accomplishment of redemptive tasks. We can start helping others. We can choose to rid ourselves of the chains of evil and guilt. We can beg for help and energy, and that's what we want to do today. We want to ask the good spirits, such as Euripides Barsanovo, and we can thank him for bringing these teachings to us. The good spirits that guide your life, dear friends, let ask them for help and energy so that we can understand what our new responsibilities are as spiritists. We ask the blessings of the spirit mentors of the Spiritist Magazine so they can bring us the energy to continue to do this work together, so they can inspire the editors, the graphic designer, the translators, so we can have these beautiful teachings in our everyday lives. We want to ask the master himself that we are trying to bring back to our daily lives and our deeds to bless us with his loving care, his serene gaze, and his embracing arms to help each and every one of us in our daily struggles and commitments. So this is the um, from the book Euripides, the spirit and and the, um, and the commitment by Corina Novellino through the medium of Alira Bessa Franz Amui. So this is a book published by um, Editor Esperanza e Caridade, which will be a hope and charity publisher. And there is a study session, Kardec Radio's um, channel, YouTube and Facebook that you can watch and you can have that blessing in your life and you can listen to the comments that are dear Vanessa, who is, by the way, the editor-in-chief of the Spiritist Magazine. So we are together in this blessed work of spreading the good news of Christ everywhere we go. And I hope, dear friends, that God bless us with the opportunity of being together again next week and another opportunity of studying the Spiritist Magazine. Go to spiritistmagazine.org. Make sure you, you go there and you download the resources. You use your apps. Use the physical copies if you have them. And then spread the good news of the Christ for all of those who may be in need. And until next week, dear friends, many, many blessings. Have a wonderful day or a wonderful night. I'll see you soon.